Watching Alaska's news source. Hello and welcome to our All Good Special. I'm your host for the next half hour, Dave Allgood, and with me is Melissa Fry. Hey, Melissa. Hey, yeah, excited for this next uh, hour. The All Good News is about bringing out the best in people. And Dave, you always say everyone has a story, and these stories are from our neighbors right here in Alaska. Yeah, the, I like to give voice to people that probably wouldn't have one, right? And starting with an uh, amazing artist who chooses to use her talents to help others heal. Now, and simply as Sister Lucia, her soft-spoken delivery is calming and reassuring. Yeah, she works for Catholic Social Services right here in Anchorage, and she's helping people in difficult situations uh, process emotions and see hope. You will not see the faces behind this art. And they share with me many stories, which is very meaningful to me. But you will see the emotions in this art. What their journey about, what difficulties they've been through, what hope they have. The simple brush strokes from complicated lives. The colors chosen from a palette of pain and hope. And certainly they just speak about something that very difficult normally would not. And a stroke of luck. And the arts come out in all different angles, different ways, different meaning. Of landing in Sister mm -hmm. Lucia's art class here at the Clare House in Anchorage. The community we work with, the poor and the homeless and the prisoners and how sad they are, made me sad also. Today, Sister Lucia is painting just for us, getting ready for a class we will not see. We are brothers and sisters. I think for that reason, it affected me. Because we do not need to see people in vulnerable positions. Art is the way that you feel safe to express and you can express anything you like. We just need to know there is help and a future in processing feelings and a belief that a flower can emerge from fouled earth. You feel better when you're able to, to speak or to express. I just invite people to express. Her eye for detail and the gift she's been given from above to share down here below. And they share with me many stories which is very meaningful to me. Because Sister Lucia believes either they trust in God, they express through art, or they even lose hope and they express it, and I hope they find it again. And maybe putting your signature down here. And the artists need to sign their name in order to have the painting the valuable. As in self-value and sometimes sad expression. A memory. There was a grandmother, and she painted like the background, the sunset, the river, the birds flying, and she was in the front facing the sunset, she holding a baby. And when I asked her, she was crying. I asked her, what is about, what is the name or the title for the painting? She said, this is me, and I'm holding my granddaughter, which just died. And maybe faith renewed as in a flower reborn, and that's... The credit is all to God. The all good news. Now, Sister Lucia says they can always use more paint supplies. Any size art canvas, paint, and paint brushes would be greatly appreciated. You can just contact Catholic Social Services to donate. Yeah, and uh, sometimes it's, uh, you know, the little things that bring us joy. But uh, a sunny day, a smile from a stranger. Um, but uh, with Sister Lucia, I just wanted to go back there. Uh, she was so sweet, and uh, we knew, I didn't. I knew that day we didn't want to film people in crisis. Yeah, of course. And she was about to teach a class, and there were some people who had volunteered, and I, I thought it would be better just to, to show her painting and uh, doing her yeah. thing and, and talking, talking about how important that is. Giving those people that voice, that yeah. is great. Yeah. So, so finding that joy, it can also be in a snowman. Dave shows us how a simple little figure made of snow brought a smile to one woman here in Anchorage. Nancy Rudolph doesn't get out much these days, especially with all the snow we've had lately, but when she does, it's baby steps and caution with the help of this reporter as she makes her way around the corner heading to the mailbox. My first thought was, oh my God, you're making me laugh. And then, then I looked down and I'm like, who made that? I'm fortunate to get a lot of emails here. When I opened this one up, there it was, a little snowman. But that little guy from a year ago made a long-lasting impression on one Nancy Rudolph. But I thought, I really need to share this because some other person probably feels that same way. You see, this picture was taken a year ago, but Nancy was hoping to see the little snowman again. So every time she takes out her keys, opens up her mailbox, because it's never fun to check your mailbox, oh, you know. Never. 
and turns around. She's just hoping this little guy might just reappear. I know, and that's why I said it to you. So it, whoever made it, that's why I said, if they want to do it again, I'm up for it, you know. Put it behind my mailbox again this year. Yeah. Because it, it spreads laughter. I'm all about laughing. But so far, no snowman, just a curious feature reporter and his cameraman, Luke Patrick. Oh. I'm the kindest person you'll ever meet. <laughs> so I have to hit ya. That is funny. You're cracking you. Look at you, you got some speed going now. Now we're kicking it. Look at you, you warmed up. You're feeling better? No. Nancy getting a little sassy, but maybe she just needs more of this little snowman back in her life. And I saw that precious little snowman sitting there. And, it, oh, man, did it make me smile. Yeah. And so I laughed all the way home. We may never know who made that little snowman, but I got to meet Nancy, and Nancy made me smile. When they check the mail, and I go, and then you turn around, and you see the little snowman, you're like, oh, the world is that bad, you know? <laughs> A little snowman. That's the all good news. Yeah, she, uh, what a, that was a, a wonderful moment. And uh, Luke, uh, who shot with me as a great photographer, he said, Dave, why don't we go build one and surprise her? Yeah. Uh, we never made it back because she passed away. And uh, her, her sister uh, was kind enough to let us know that uh, that story that we did uh, was one of the last things that really brought her a lot of joy. Just shows, yeah, you never know the timing of things mm -hmm. and just something so simple and easy as building a snowman brings so much joy to someone. Oh, I know. It makes, gives me a little emotional. All right. Hey, a young pup disappears and goes on an incredible journey. We bring you the tale of Nanook. And his owner who didn't give up even though the odds were bad. You're watching Alaska's News Source. Yeah, welcome back. You know, he wandered off and she was worried, but she didn't give up hope. Lisa. This is the tale, yeah, about a dog who survived an almost impossible journey, then got reconnected with his owner. This is Nanook, an Australian shepherd whose name in Siberian Yupik means polar bear, and this is... Okay, I'm Mandy Nicole Alitan, I work in, I'm from St. Lawrence Island. St. Lawrence Island sits in the middle of the Bering Sea, not far from Russia. Winters are harsh, and Nanook here, he was a gift. We got him last year for my daughter's birthday, her eighth birthday. And That's Brooklyn hugging her birthday present just the other day. We were always dog family. But it was just over a month ago on March 7th. My husband tried to look for them. They are gone. Mandy had taken Nanook out for a walk, and he just disappeared into the snow and fog. Like, he's gone. I I noticed, you know, my heart was broken for him. And Nanook didn't know it, but he was about to embark on a four-week-long journey. Nanook had been gone uh, almost a month. Did you pretty much give up on him? No, I didn't give up on him. I knew. Mandy had faith and never doubted the one-year-old Nanook would make it home. He's a survivor, you know. He's a survivor, and he's young and everything. And Now, Nanook could have headed a little northwest the short 53 miles to Russia, but instead he chose the path of most resistance, somehow navigating the icy Bering Sea and frigid temperatures, high winds, even the occasional polar bear to land more than, get this, 150 miles away in Wales, Alaska. I can't believe he just made it all the way and he survived and he's strong. And, and how did Mandy know Nenuk was alive? Social media. Michael and Hilary Akinga of Wales posted a picture of a weary but seemingly healthy Nanook on the Facebook page, Gnome Chatter. That's our dog. He's alive. And as you might imagine, Brooklyn took the news well. Up in joy and screaming like... She couldn't believe it. So a month to the day, Nanook didn't have to wander back home. He hitched a ride on a plane. Oh, we're happy we're reunited and we're blessed to have him back in our lives. So happy Nanook. He did have a bit of an injured front paw. My dad says it looked like a polar bear bite, but people say it looked like a wolverine bite. But I'm So not we can sure. only imagine what was going through Nanook's mind as he was adrift on the icy seas just trying to get home. I wish we knew what dogs were thinking, but we know they're smart. And I think we can all agree a dog named Polar Bear lived up to his Siberian Yupik name and now has an adventure only he will ever know. But I'm not sure, you know, if dogs could talk, he would have one great of a story. <laughs> and that's the all good news. 
Oh my God, that story went viral because we got it and everybody wanted it. CNN was calling yeah. me, uh, CBN from Canada, um, everybody. Well, that it's a good story. Went national. Amazing. First of all, just to think that, I mean, he was on ice there yeah. for who knows how long. Yeah. And I love how she says, yeah, if dogs could talk and if we knew the story. Yeah. yeah. How amazing would that If be? only, right? If dogs right. could talk, I'd freak out. All right. Yeah. It, it's a nut. It's a legume. It's a peanut power. Move over, Popeye and spinach. There's a new superhero in town. When you download the Fred Meyer app, you have easy access to savings every day and get personalized coupons sent straight to your phone. Save big today when you download the Fred Meyer app. Fred Meyer, fresh for everyone. Whether you're trolling the weed line or deep dropping out on the ledge. Cito, 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 this is jacked up. Seems like I have a clogged fuel filter. I'm on some fish and not really want to leave. Our captains are standing by to troubleshoot or to get you back home. Fight fish, not engine trouble. Keep fishing. At Fred Meyer, we want our fresh produce to meet your expectations, which is why we do up to a 27-point inspection to check for things like color and scarring. Because when it comes to fresh, higher standards mean fresher produce. Fred Meyer, fresh for everyone. You're watching Alaska's News Source. Melissa, you know, a lot of us here, a lot of our viewers, we grew up in the era of magical superheroes who defended the good and honest people of the world, a world where you could just put a towel around your neck and call it a cape. And fly around the house, annoying your siblings and soaring to super heights, a dream, a book, and peanuts with a special superpower. Okay, my name is Dennis Vissera, and the first book I wrote is The Adventures of Peanut Power, Peanut Power Races to Gnome. It all started for Dennis. Let's go back to 1967. I was five years old. He was running around the house. Soon I was putting a towel around my neck like a cape, and I was munching on peanuts, and I was bouncing around through the house. So naturally. And my brother and sister started calling me Peanut Power. And through an entire career. So for 30 years, I, I taught at a little elementary school called Ursa Minor Elementary. And I was, that little bright idea for a book, The Adventures of Peanut Power, finally came together in a low point for a lot of us. You know, for me, I was lucky because everything happened during COVID. And during COVID, you're at your home and you're, you're just, uh, you know, you basically have nothing to do. He so had again, just retired. Within uh, four months, we had put together three more books. And what's really neat, all three books were printed right here in Anchorage. And Dennis just didn't do books. He created one of the only Iditarod board games in the world. Just like the real Iditarod. It's a challenging game. It's a challenging race. You master this game, you're going to know the Iditarod. So naming the puppies was easy as peanut butter pie. Dennis reading Amish from his original book and all of this, yeah. homegrown. Yes, I was born and raised right here in Anchorage. So far, sales have been pretty good, but all of this is more about a childhood dream. You know what? Follow your dream. And the one thing I've learned over the years, too, don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do it. All right, so Peanut, like, he, he, he's, he's saving the world. He's saving Alaska, but how does he know? How he, does he know? He gets a call from the president of the world saying, peanut power, the world's in trouble. We need your help. So Wait. peanut power gets on his peanut-shaped phone. He calls his superhero friends. Well, I, uh, Dennis, I have a surprise for you. Uh, we're, gonna, we're going back in time. Oh, good memories. I have a cape for you. OK. It may look like a towel, but it is not. No, it is this, is, this is this. That's it right there. Got to get the cape on. Got to have peanuts to be superhero. There's a lot of money. You know. Let's do it, Dave. All right, let's go. So with our capes on, me and Peanut Power flew around the studio looking for mischief, shenanigans, or even danger. I see danger. Do you see danger? I do. Over there. Let's go. Get the baby. Let's go. Okay. The Adventures of Peanut Power and Dennis Becerra. Wherever there's an identity ride. Peanut Power will be there. Wherever there's an interview. Peanut Power will be there. And he's here. Yes, Dave, I am. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. That's the all good news. Oh, I love and it. 
and <laughs> you've got your own cape. I brought my own cape because ready to go fly around. You know, when's the last time you did a forward roll in the grass like a kid, right? You know, do for some fun. I might break something, but it'd be fun. You know, so be you'd a kid. Have fun while doing it. Yeah, I uh, super it. nice guy. And uh, the, these books are available around town. And uh, just go to the All Good News page on uh, our, our Alaska news source, and all the information's there for you. So yeah, you can find Dennis's story there as well, and I'd uh, love to see that. Yep, yep. All right. Did you know there was a pro wrestling here in Alaska? And they have capes, too. There's even uh, right here in Anchorage, and you can go to learn to, to be just like them. You can train like these guys. Yeah, it's called 907 Pro Wrestling Academy, and they're producing some pretty amazing talent. Dave went to one of their events, described it simply as high-flying fantastic. It was pretty cool. Now, are you ready for the first title? It's high flying. Live entertainment. All this flexing and posing. Oh, you can do better than that. This is Alaska Wrestling, 907 Pro Wrestling, and it's a blast. Okay. As I welcome all of you to Planet Pain. Ow! Here at the Arctic Rec Center in Anchorage, the gym has been turned into controlled chaos. This is a house of pain match. All of this, it's about the 907 Pro Show. And the fans face paint and masks, and it's up close and personal. This is Showtime. That's Tyler Payne, the yoga ninja, and the current 907 Pro Wrestling Champ flipping into the crowd. I had my first uh, professional match in 2010, so. It really combines everything that I love and I'm passionate about. It's literally, it's, it's theater, it's arts, it's athleticism, it's drama. The atmosphere is just slamming. And the fans, they peek and leer and even laugh and take videos they can't get enough. Why? It's like free therapy. A stress reliever. <laughs> Come to the Arctic Rec Center, let out your aggression. <laughs> so the losers hobble, licking their wounds as they make their way back to the locker room. And the champs make their victory laps. So dads and daughters and grandpas and granddaughters, they had a good time. Oh, and the champ, the Yoga Ninja, it's more than just a namaste name. I have a bachelor's degree in sports nutrition and exercise science. I've been teaching yoga for 10 years. And that's Get there. the all good news. Wow, uh, those are some <laughs> impressive moves. <laughs> The way I was talking about flips, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The Tyler guy, he uh, he teaches. He's actually really cool. He teaches hot yoga at the Alaska Club. That's why he's so flexible. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, <laughs> but uh, that is so fun, by the way. If you have not been, they 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 you can check out nine, their uh, wrestling uh, Facebook page, and they have events like every other week. They, it is so fun. It is so worth the money. They, pure entertainment. They, yeah, pure entertainment. Yeah. Uh, Alaskan grown. All right, an unwanted visitor. They didn't even bother to knock and just let himself right in. How a Soldatna woman managed to get a moose out of her house. You're watching Alaska's News Source. All right, Melissa, the, the sale is over, but we want to show you what you may have missed. Yeah, the Anchorage Museum did a little spring cleaning at the Seed Lab. They hosted their first ever garage sale from parking meters to ping pong balls and former art displays. And after a long winter, it's a reminder of how much fun it is to just find a great sale. Check it out. It's an Anchorage Museum display coming your way. Spring cleaning, the Seed Lab is letting all this stuff go in a garage sale, and you can make your own personal exhibit. I cleaned out all of these different storage closets and offices and a lot of the things that we've been storing and holding uh -huh. onto, and we are releasing them to another home uh, pretty hard. How about these hats for these for sale? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you're blonde, do you have more fun? Absolutely. I'm a brunette, I like brunette. Let's do the model one, let's go. Okay. Uh, yeah. Dave. What are you doing? I'm for sale. Look, we're in a frame. I'm American Gothic. Go, Barry. Barry Stoic. <laughs> How much do you think we'll fetch? It's priceless. 
And then there's this big blue peep. I don't know what it is, but I want it. Hi, Bluey. Hey, Dave, bring that over here. Okay, Check. I'm coming. Hey, I got this Bluey. furniture. I think Rebecca was humoring me at this point. They had about 30 of these big red metal dots. I thought they looked like big ears. All right, Rebecca, what do we have here? Well, you want to go sledding? Man, these are these are like you could. I think this is, you could cook in these like a wok. Yeah, you might remember them on the wall from our uh, Snow Flyers exhibition. I don't, but that's okay. They're all for sale, like all this yellow spray paint, cool framed pictures, hats, and this little guy. So why the sale? All of these things are really awesome, and so why not let our members and our patrons and people that are excited about garage sales in general yeah. come take a look and take some of these things home. So. Share the love of cool stuff, and Monopoly isn't the only one with free parking. Hey, look at this. Oh, my God. Hey, Hank. Hank's my camera guy. Uh, he used to work here, by the way. Uh, I can park anywhere I want, Hank. This is so cool. You can come buy one of these, I think. Score! One person's parking meter parts is another person's fashion mohawk. Dave, do you always wear the things that you're about to buy? <sighs> well, not now that you mentioned it. It seems like I've been doing that a lot. <laughs> Maybe Just following your lead, Rebecca. <laughs> Anywho, there's even a few ping pong tables. Oh, and foosball fun. Oh, oh wait, I just hit my own ball. Ah, own ball. <laughs> the whole idea at the Seed Lab, something here might just grow on you. So, Rebecca, thank you so much. That was yeah. fun, and I am so happy. Can I buy Bluey? Absolutely. Well, I if wanna... he's still here. Oh. And Bluey. that's maybe a trumpet, maybe a skull, maybe a skull that plays a trumpet. <laughs> the All Good News. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> the thing about Alaskans is we love sales like that because yeah. we just don't have as many shopping opportunities. So, yeah, yeah. Especially from a museum. That's awesome. Yeah, it's stuff. It's all kinds of stuff. That was a lot of fun, thanks to those folks out there. All right. So yeah. now the big question that the sale is over, did you actually take Bluey home? I did not take Bluey uh -huh. home. I, 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 I live in a small place, and uh, Bluey would have been yeah. a little too big. It would have been uncomfortable for him. But right, I'm exactly. For it. Better home. <laughs> All right. Thanks for asking. Uh, she lives where you can just leave your door open sometimes. But now Barbara Nichols is keeping her door shut after a close encounter with a pretty big visitor. This is Jesse, Barb's dog. Regular morning, I let the dog outside, and I never shut the door all the way so that he can come back in himself. And and Jesse did come back in, but he wasn't alone. I think I stared at it for three or four seconds before it really dawned on me, yes, he's in the house. <laughs> Jesse, he had brought a friend. Uh, the husband thought he was dreaming. A really, really big friend. He came walking into the living room. I stood up, took about two steps, and realized there was a huge moose in my house that had just followed Jesse in. Let me repeat that in case you missed it. A moose in my house. So I'm hollering there's a moose in the house. A normal reaction. The moose wanted the green stuff. He was uh, starting to munch on all of the salad bar plants that I have in this back atrium room. Fresh veggies in an otherwise snowy Alaska town. That moose didn't have a care in the world. He was just enjoying his salad bar. So Barb called the police. They asked if she had a chair to put in the hallway to keep the moose at bay? Well, yeah, I have four kitchen chairs, but none of them are six feet tall that he couldn't get over. So I don't know what good that would do. So <laughs> we didn't put a chair down. <laughs> yeah, that's like a that's like a throwing a toothpick at a giant or something, right? Right, right. So one officer reaching across the kitchen sink. And so he just Stuck the taser about a foot away from the moose just for the noise. The munching moose, he wasn't tased or phased by the noise. And then the other officer hollered, and then he got a little bit startled and... Ah, good old yelling. The moose did have a little trouble turning around. But on his way out, he did manage to get about a two-foot vine of my plant to take to go. And as to why the moose came in, Barb says Jesse, he may have been a bit lonely. What'd you tell me when I called you? Jesse just needed, wanted a friend? He wanted Bullwinkle? Yeah. He, he, wanted, he wanted to have a, a, a sleepover and dinner with his friend Bullwinkle. So after about 25 minutes, Bullwinkle made it out, but the salad bar was calling his name. Oh, Lord, he's coming back. He might kick out that He window. knows. I know. The door's shut, but I hope you don't kick it open. It's about two feet from me right now. Ah, the joys of living in Alaska. Did you have a little talk with Jesse? Did you do? Yes, we did. We told him that he has to ask first before he invites company in. 
<laughs> and that... <laughs> no, go away. You cannot come in my door. The All Good News. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, I mean, only in Alaska yep. we see this kind of stuff happen. But my first thought was those poor plants. It's hard to be a gardener. <laughs> <laughs> Grow all that green and then... Uh, you, can't, you, you can't tempt the moose like that. That's true. You can't tempt them. They were just sitting there. So uh, thanks to Barb and uh, uh, for being so gracious. She was kind of funny as well. Oh, so. yeah. Good, good stuff. Humor. All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us today. And if you want to see more good, all good news stories, head to our app and look under features. Yeah, be sure to watch us weekdays right here at 4 p.m. on CBS 5, where every day you can join us for an hour. That right here. And, of course, the latest on the weather.